Hi and welcome to my channel. In this video I'm going to be making a walking stick from start to finish complete with pyrography. Uh, it even has a turn knob and you can watch me doing a little bit on the lathe. Although at times you may think that I'm working in uh, an industrial estate um, I'm actually doing most of the work on the stick in my garden. There are times when I have to use the workshop for the lathe work etc or if it's raining but most of it is done out here. Here's a quick view of uh, the pyrography on the stick. This is the part that I've done so far with the leaves, the stems and the flowers. So this is how I go about it. I'm working indoors today because it's chucking it down outside. The first thing I do is go down the stick and look for the little knots where the branches have come off and I use the centre of where the branch came off for the centre of the flower. Um, what I do is, this is a primrose type flower, so I draw five petals in a circle around the centre of that knot. Um, you'll see it in a little bit closer up shortly but I just thought I'd show you the distance view so you can see how I am working. So here I am now about to draw a flower and you can actually see it a little bit closer. After doing the centre piece the first thing I do is choose a spot at half past if you're looking at a clock and put in a little V pointing towards the centre and then the two sides of the petals. Then I move up to 5-2 on the clock and do a similar shape. Then at roughly 5 past, just after 5 past, and then I'll do another one at 20 past, 25 past, and finally the last one fills in the gap. You've got to have a method to doing these things if you're going to be doing a lot of petals. Right, now I'm putting in the stem between the two flowers. It's just straightforward, two parallel lines. Once that is done, I draw the lines in for the leaves, which come in a bunch of three. I take one line straight through to the end and then come back to the where the leaf begins and draw a curving line round to the end. And I repeat that process again, one on each side of that centre leaf. Choosing the place to put the leaves is reasonably simple. I just try to um, even up all the negative space between the flowers and the stems to fill in the pattern. Right here I'm starting to do some of the pyrography. I'm using a Peter Child's pyrography iron. Uh, which has served me very well over the years, very robust, never any trouble and I'm using with it a spoon tip and I'm using it in the inverted position that just means it's upside down so if you imagined a spoon and uh, you turned it upside down all your cornflakes would fall off well that's the shape in which I'm using it and using a spoon tip it's important which way you use it because if you're using it in the inverted position it's very good for drawing outlines um, but you don't want everything with an outline if you take a look at the leaves and the edges of the flowers you can't see an outline and that's because there I've used the spoon the right way up and it gives a smoother shading. If you use it inverted like I'm doing now to delineate between the petals, if you do that around the stems and the leaves and the outsides of the flowers, you finish up with a, a very rough looking burnt edge and uh, that's not what you always want when you're doing pyrography. So sometimes it's easier to use the bottom of the smooth spoon so as you get a smooth shading. Right, now I'm moving on. Uh, I'm going to start doing the leaves. And you can see that I put the centre line in first. That's the centre vein. And each side of the centre vein I'll put a couple of side veins. Um, 
it doesn't matter where you put them I think the important thing is when that you're actually doing the veins is to vary the speed and when you first put the pyrography iron on you always get a darker area um, you can blow on it to help uh, alleviate that as you put the iron down but generally the thing to do is to let it linger a little bit slower as you put it on and then speed up and you'll find that by doing that you get a finer line the nice taper as the vein goes towards the point of the leaf here you can see how I'm doing the shading up to the sides of the stems and round the leaves and flowers using the bottom of the spoon tip um, by doing that I get a line around things but without that sharp ragged edge that would be uh, the outcome if I used it in the inverted position and here I'm filling it in trying to get the tones the same I've um, speeded this next little sequence up a little bit so um, just so as you can see a little bit more of how I go about doing the burning in I don't do it this fast in real time I can assure you it takes a little bit longer to go around um, the leaves and things if you do make a mistake by the way it's not all over you can get a, a sharp craft knife and uh, just scrape away at the wood and uh, remove any dark marks I have had to do that several times where I've gone wrong um, and made the stem too thin that you can't see it but generally you can fix most things um, you can even burn the whole thing out and pretend there was never flower there in the first place if you wanted to I thought it might be useful just to show you uh, what a Peter Charles pyrography iron station looks like and there it is and you can see the knob at the center which controls the heat and very accurate it is too and here is the tip the spoon tip I was talking about in the inverted position right it's time to deal with the knob here is the drawing I did to uh, show you how it goes to go with the screw and uh, piece of tube if you're interested in that please pause the video other than that here we are on the lathe and I'm here I'm using a skew chisel to make a tenon for fitting the wood onto the chuck and onto the lathe after making sure that the wood's tight I then go about marking off how um, how long the actual knob is the bit on the right you can see is going to be the knob and the next thing I have to do is turn down another piece for the actual tube and the ferrule that will go over the top that fits between the stick and the knob to give it extra security the screw will also need to go between the stick and the knob so here I'm just positioning where it's got to go I have to put a drill a hole through the knob for that screw to pass through into the stick and then it gets tightened up into the stick so I use a long drill which is, is just slightly bigger than the width of the screw and having fitted a Jacobs chuck to the lathe I then wind that drill through the knob and it drills a hole right through it um, all a Jacobs chuck does is it holds the drill still while the lathe goes round um, instead of like a normal drill where you put a drill in a chuck and the drill goes round and the wood stays still uh, now I've got to because the screw head is bigger than the screw I need to make a recess for the screw head to go down and you've just seen me measuring up how far that is and if you look closely you can see a little black mark I've put on the side of the drill bit with a marker pen 
and I know that I now have to go up to that black mark and that will recess the hole in the knob far enough to take the screw but still allow it to enough to go into the stick. Now you can see me I'm starting to actually start turning the knob and start rounding off the top part of it and um, so it's actually um, knob shaped as it were. I'm taking it very slowly and um, no point in rushing these things and after I've done started to get the top end done I then move my way down to the bottom and I'll carry on doing that until I've got the old knob in exactly the shape as I want to do. I won't show it you all because it's rather boring to watch. After getting the knob into shape, the next thing to do is sandpaper just to get it smooth and I start at about 150 and then go up to 400. You can see the end still a bit rough but it doesn't matter because I'm going to take some out of that, drill a hole in that for the coin and here it is it's a pound coin um, but it's 22 diameters wide, 22 millimeters diameter wide and I haven't got a um, Fosner bit that wide so I need to find another coin so I've got an old apney and that is just over 25 millimeters wide I've got a 25 millimeter wide um, Fosner bit so it'll have to be the half penny um, just before I get do that I'm going to put in some lines for the top and bottom uh, py black pyrography marks and these are done in two different ways the first one is done with a piece of wire because I can hold that against the knob put the lathe on it'll cause friction and the friction causes heat and the heat burns uh, a black line around the knob and you'll see that smoke coming out shortly there it is um, I couldn't do the top end black line on the top end of the knob with the wire because there's nothing to pull against the wire would keep pulling off so I did it with a piece of veneer and you can see it's done there uh, for some reason I forgot to record it but this is how it's done I just take a piece of veneer veneer holds in the slot that I made with a chisel and it will burn it through. Here you can actually see the line, uh, the two lines I've put on and you can see that I'm now making a recess for the half penny coin with the Fosner bit. It looks as if I'm going in very deep here but I'm taking the time and going in just enough to allow the coin uh, to fit flat on the top of the knob. And there you can see I'm putting it in and uh, it's more or less flat. On this view you can now see the recess for the coin and I'm now parting it off. Um, which all that means is just taking, cutting through the piece of wood and taking it off, off the lathe. And then I'm trying the knob inside the hole, fits nicely. So the next thing to do is to put the stick together, put the screw down the centre, plenty of araldite in the joint and araldite the um, half penny in the top which hides the screw hole and that's it. Now I've done a pattern that I'm going to do in pyrography around the top of the knob. So now, now it's back to the pyrography. I'm putting the lines in, spiral lines around the knob one way um, I've got the heat turned up and the tip inverted. I've got the heat turned up because you want to be doing these lines quick. If you try doing them too slow with a cooler tip you'll find that you'll start blobbing. So turn the heat up quite a bit and in the same inverted position that's what I use with a standing motion to actually do the diamonds. Um, you'll see a lot of smoke so do it outside or if you do it in the workshop do it with plenty of uh, air, um, air extraction and that's about it here is the finished knob um, if you enjoyed it um, please consider subscribing thanks for watching any questions or comments are welcome thank you